Well, in, in uh, North America, but also in Europe, uh, consumers as they are at home, they clearly are uh, snacking more. And we've now had time to, to talk to consumers about that. And, and I would say about 50% of consumers are clearly indicating that they're snacking more uh, in Europe and in the US. And, and that's what we see in the numbers. Um, they, uh, they sort of graze, I heard you say, that that is correct. And the snacks they seem to be going to are uh, a lot of uh, veggies and fruits, a lot of cheese, uh, but also a lot of biscuits, crackers, and so on. And uh, I, uh, it didn't show up in our research, but it's all the snacks I hear. So it's, it's kind of normal. And um, as a consequence, we've seen quite an increase in demand. Originally, you would have thought this is pantry loading, but this has now been going on for more than six weeks. Uh, and unless uh, consumers are building a warehouse for Oreos at home, I think they are eating it. And uh, that is uh, really the strength of, uh, of this first quarter for us. It's a really important point because you didn't give guidance like so many other companies. So the question is, can these strong sales continue? So you're saying it's not pantry loading. It's, it's people actually buying a lot and consuming it and then coming back to buy more? Yes, that's, uh, that's the data that we have um, and declared by consumers. And we've interviewed uh, uh, several thousands of them around the world. And, and that's clearly what they're indicating. There's several reasons for that. The, the first one is that a lot of the out-of-home eating has now come in-home. And, and that leads to more snacking, more grazing. The second thing is that snacking, sharing a snack with your family, with your kids, brings back a little bit of a feeling of a, of a comfort and, and uh, you start to feel, uh, feel better, basically. And then uh, I, I think they just want to feel normal. They want the normalcy back in their life and having an Oreo or uh, having a family moment that, that just feels normal to them. And I think those are the reasons why you see this increase in snacking. Dirk, uh, a lot of uh, your peers and, and other food companies talked about the, you know, the idea of pantry loading, stocking up uh, when this initial fear uh, peaked uh, of how long we'd be stuck at home. Did you see mm -hmm. that? And have you seen it tail off perhaps in, in April whilst we're still all in lockdown? Perhaps fear levels and, and, and panic levels have, have declined. Yes, yes, we clearly see, we clearly saw an original peak where weekly sales would be up 30 percent. Uh, in the U.S., but that now has, has gone down into the high single digits, which is still a lot higher than it used to be, but that's, that's clearly that tailing off, and now we're really in normal replenishment mode, I would say. How exposed are you, Dirk, to travel retail, duty-free shopping with some of the, the chocolates, convenience stores, and everything else, the part of the economy that is actually shut down? Um, we, we are obviously exposed uh, to that. Uh, travel retail is, is uh, uh, small for us. It's, uh, it's less than 1% of our sales. It's important. Uh, it's largely uh, chocolate. And uh, clearly that has been almost reduced to zero. The, the other area that's important is what we call the traditional trade. Uh, less obvious in the US, but uh, uh, mainly in emerging markets, the smaller stores, um, a, consumers were not allowed to circulate freely. B, distributors or our sales force were not allowed to attend. And most of these stores closed. That's uh, traditional trade. If you go around the world, will be around 20% of our sales. And then there is also a segment which is what we call away from home, food service and so on, less than 10% of our sales. That is also affected. Now, all of that will come back as these channels open up and we see that happening gradually in Europe and now in the U.S. So it's going to be a temporary effect, but, but clearly we have been affected by that. What kind of behavior are you seeing post-pandemic in a market like China? And can you extrapolate anything from that to, to the Western world, Europe and the U.S.? Well, China has been very different. I would say the measures that they used to contain were more uh, drastic. And then the return has been very fast. They were able to come back very fast. I would add to that that our team in China uh, has done an incredible job. I have to really congratulate them for that. And so in the first quarter, our sales in China were up uh, 3%. 
which is quite amazing. Uh, if you compare to uh, February, where they were down uh, 30%, that gives you an idea how much we've come back in March and, and we have had a good January. So uh, I would say China was great for us, driven also by the performance of our team. Uh, but I don't think you can use that as an example for the rest of the world. The, first of all, the impact of the pandemic is bigger in Europe and in uh, North America. Second, we haven't used the same containment measures. And, and three, the, the, the going back to normal will not be as disciplined as it was in China. So I think it will go slower. Go slower here. What, what about the emerging markets? It looks like that was the weaker spot of the report. And what do you expect from EM with global growth set to shrink here meaningfully? Yeah, and the effect you saw in the first quarter and which will continue in the second quarter is this closure of certain of these channels, the traditional trade, the kiosks and so on, which are very big in, in uh, emerging markets. But if you look at our emerging markets, they are uh, split up in a number of groups. You have China, and I just talked about China coming back. You have India, was uh, affected in the first quarter and will be affected in, a, in the second quarter heavy uh, uh, closure there of the, of the channels. But we do expect that we will come back. We have our products are at the right price points, affordable for the whole population. So we think India will come back quite uh, rapidly. And the same in Southeast Asia. Then another big chunk of our emerging markets is Central and Eastern Europe, where we think also, again, the closure of some of the channels. In fact, they're not as, as affected at the moment, those markets. Um, and they will come back uh, very fast. So two-thirds of our emerging markets, we expect, will return to normalcy uh, relatively fast. Of course, Latin America and Africa and Middle East will see a bigger recession. They have severe devaluations. We have the oil crisis for the Middle East. So one-third, we expect that uh, we will see a lingering effect and, and a decrease uh, or a mitigated uh, consumption of our products.